Once a year, physicists from all over Thailand get together to discuss the latest developments in their fields of research. One of the most respected of them is Dr. Tirupat Vilaitong, a retired university professor known for his groundbreaking research into ion beam biotechnology. Dr. Tirupat was educated in New Zealand in the 1960s when he went to Auckland University after winning a Colombo Plan scholarship. Dr. Tirupat Villatong, it's lovely to meet you. Thanks very much for talking to us today. It's a pleasure. You were studying in New Zealand between 1963 and 1968. What took you to that part of the world? My dad, he visited New Zealand a couple of years before and he just happened to like it very much. So he advised me to, to go there you know, to, or to choose the country. And was it the right choice for you? Yes, of course, of course, indeed. Yeah. Why was that? I went to New Zealand when I was about 18 and then I spent, what, four years there. So, so you were there when the time that you were growing up. And that, I believe, is uh, the most important time in your life, where you grow up and whom you grow up with, see. And I was very happy that uh, I was in New Zealand and I lived for four years with the family, with the New Zealand family. And I can say that being in New Zealand for five years shaped my life later on. What did you learn from the experience of living with the New Zealand family? Let me say something like this first. Uh, in New Zealand, you meet the people, right? And the country is a quiet little country and the, and the people are very, very sincere and very friendly indeed, you see. And also when I live with the family, I happen to be living with a very, very lovely family. At that time, the husband was a, a medical doctor and then his wife, just a housewife, and they have three children. So I was treated like one of their children. And Dr. Baker, what I, I, I learned from him that you can be very tender and you can be very soft, but you can be very, very strong when it comes to defending your, your idea or your discipline. You know? no, so that's what, what I learned. And uh, Mrs. Baker, who is still alive, and we see each other many times, either in New Zealand or in Thailand, uh, I think she is, she, she is one of the kindest women in, in the world that I, I ever know. You stayed in touch with the family and continued to see each other and your daughter also went to study in New Zealand as well, didn't she? And, and there was a link there too? Yes. She went to do her master degree at Auckland University and she happened to stay in the, the same room that I, I did, you know, when, when I, I, I was there. And so uh, she had a really, really good memories of, of her stay there. In you know. the same room with the same family? In the same room and in the same family, yes, yes. I, I would like to add that, you see, uh, by living in New Zealand, you learn, you learn the word of sportsmanship, you know, because you, you have to go and, and, and see the, uh, or watch the rugby match and understand how, how they play and that is a very, very hard game and you have to be very, very sportman-like to play that kind of, of, of game, you know. And that's how I, I, I think that's, that taught me the word sportsmanship. You, know? you didn't mm. just watch rugby, you, you also played soccer, didn't you, in, in New Zealand? I played soccer be before I went there and when I was in New Zealand, I also played soccer with the university team, yes. I think you're being modest here because you were in the Auckland University's first 11 team. Eventually, yes, yes. I, I start in, in the second team and then they, they, they promote me to the first team or what you call the first 11. What about the education experience? What stood out for you in terms of New Zealand's approach to education? What I noticed 
was that no matter where you went to high school in New Zealand, whether in Hamilton, Nelson, or Manawatu, you more or less get the same standard of education, which enable you to go to college or university later on. And that, that is a little bit different from what we have in, in Thailand here. And what about at university? Is there anything different in terms of the style of the way you're taught? I found that uh, when I attend, uh, my first year was very really difficult because at that time, I believe that uh, there was only one exam per year. And that was hard. But of course, uh, when you had ex one, only one exam per year and, and, and then you have to study, you have to be very really disciplined because you have to study, keep studying throughout the year. Just not, not like just a few days before, that, that's no chance. So, so that uh, you learn how to, to spend your time in how to uh, study bit by bit Steady. You did still graduate with a, a BSc in physics from Auckland physics, University yes. and then did your um, masters and your PhD in the US and you've gone on to have a very successful career. Could you describe in layperson's terms what you've spent your life doing and why? After I come back from, from, from the US, that's when I, I really start to, to work, you know, uh, really hard, I would say. Uh, that was in the year about 1979. At that time, there was not a single research laboratory in, in physics in Thailand. So we tried to establish uh, a sort of a research laboratory. And what we did actually build uh, was a, a small accelerator that could produce neutrons, ions, electrons or photons. But we found that the most or the important thing that we could do was to use the heavy ions and to use to bombard heavy ions on to a biological cell that I believe is something that I have been doing for the last 20 years or so uh, and still doing it now. Yeah. Dr. Terapat, thanks so much for talking to us. It's been a pleasure to meet you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.